thank you for being with us here at the Fargo Dome. Uh, we would like to make sure to accommodate our live viewing and listening audiences. If you would please direct your questions into one of the two microphones in the room, and we'll take uh, comments from Athletic Director Gene Taylor to begin. Okay, uh, thanks everybody for being here. I'm not sure I'm gonna give you a, a whole lot of information other than that uh, we have decided that Coach Bull is gonna coach the team the rest of the season. Um, we felt that my personal feelings um, felt that it was best for continuity at this point in time, let the coordinators coordinate, focus on game preparation and game planning. Uh, certainly <clears throat> after meeting with the team, a lot of emotion in the room, as you can imagine, but had a lot of good discussion. In regards to um, the future and the timeline of the replacement for Coach Bull, uh, I'm still working through that a little bit. I'm going to spend the next few days uh, talking to our folks on campus, talk about the processes that I'd have to go through make sure that President Brashani and I are comfortable with what the next steps will be, and uh, we'll go from there. So there's not, <clears throat> excuse me, there's not been a, a final decision yet on what the process is gonna be, how long it's gonna take. I haven't really put a timeline to that yet. Still working through some of that. So uh, with that, I guess I'll open up to questions. Gene, how much of the staff will go with Craig Bola? You know, that I, that I don't know. They're all here now, and I met with the staff. That's a good point, uh, Jamal. I appreciate that. I did meet with the staff. I said, you guys need to be committed to this football program and these players till the end of the season. I need your focus here on NDSU, not on anything else. And they all looked at me and committed, yep, we're, we're, we're here. Now, how many at the end of the season will Coach Bull offer? That's, that's going to be up to him. Did the players decide that they wanted him, uh, Coach Bull, to coach through the season? Was that their decision as well? You know, we just had a lot of good discussion. Uh, amongst the players, and then I ultimately went with the captains, and then we decided to have Coach Bull stay and coach the rest of the season. Gene, when did you find out of uh, Craig's decision? Well, Craig and I had met on, we meet every Friday, and he had told me that he had gone out and visited with Wyoming. He had not made up his mind whether or not he was going to take the job, but that, uh, as of Friday, he wanted to get through the football game, and then I, I, last night after the game, he mentioned to me that he had accepted the job. Was there any shock or surprise from you that Wyoming was the job that came from? <laughs> you know, yes and no. Um, obviously, you know, Craig and I talked about potential opportunities. And quite frankly, guys, I knew this day was coming. Um, I know a lot of people are questioning the timing of it. There, there's never a good time. Uh, but when you look at, the, obviously, the dollars that uh, they're com going to commit to him and, 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 and his assistant coaches, whoever those may be, you know, you look at Fresno and Northern Illinois and some of those programs, Boise State, you know, if he can do those things at Wyoming, you could, you could probably see if he's successful enough being in a BCS game someday. So, you know, I think a lot of people think Wyoming, well, why would you leave it? You know, it's going to stay, but it's a, it's a step up, obviously, financially, and then, you know, the type of football program that play, obviously, 85 scholarships. But, yeah, yes and no is, is my answer on that one. Any of the current assistance uh, candidates? You know, I'd be foolish to overlook some of the staff that we have on this on this football coaching staff. Uh, for me to go out and just say, okay, we're going to, you know, look, I'm going to take a strong look at a couple of coaches that we have on this staff as well as possibly nationally. But I want to get through this as quickly as we can. Clearly, we've got recruits that we have committed to. Um, we want to make sure all those young men know who they're going to be playing for next year and then be able to, whoever that next coach is, they need to build their staff as well as quickly as they can. You said that you knew that this day would come eventually. Um, had there been any preparation on your part in terms of potential head coaching, head coaches that you were looking at? Yeah, you know, every year you kind of look, scour, look around and say, what if, what if, you know, kind of thing. So, yeah, there's always a few people that you say you have in your desk drawer that you'd consider. Um, and again, I think to overlook a couple of guys on the staff would be, would not be very smart either. Gene, in the meetings uh, this morning, were there players who were opposed to bowl? You know, I'm going to talk, you know, it was a players meeting, players only meeting. I was fortunate enough to be in there, and it's going to stay a players only meeting. So is there any hesitation on your part to, to have Craig stay since he's going to have his mind in two places at once? No, actually, uh, it was better, in my opinion, for him to be here because I know he would be here. Um, and yeah, he's going to have a couple of things maybe to deal with Wyoming, but if he's there and you know, he's trying to recruit potential staff to go there, then it's a mixed bag. And I've asked him that he needs to be focused on this program. And quite frankly, University of Wyoming said the same thing. They said, Craig, you need to go focus on your team, get as many wins as you can, and then we'll worry about you coming out here and starting the job out here. Why would they wait, Gene, until after the season then to make the announcement? Well, you know, I think obviously they needed to get, get the name in place um, and get somebody hired. I, I don't know why they didn't wait, but. 
again, I think you know, the way coaching searches go, they wanted to know if Craig was in or out, I'm sure. If not, they needed to probably move on to the next candidate. But I think uh, I appreciate the fact that Wyoming said, hey, you know, you, you go ahead and do what you need to do at NDSU, and then we'll get you started out here as soon as we can. How, how would you like it? Coach said that uh, to, to, to a certain extent he had accomplished all he could here. Give me your thoughts on that thinking. Well, you know, obviously two national championships, an undefeated regular season this year, three conference, you know, titles in a row. You know, there's always more you can accomplish, clearly. And I think as a coach with a personal goal to maybe have a chance to take another team and build another team, I think he saw that as an opportunity. Is there still a lot to accomplish here? Yes, there is. And, uh, you know, the, the coach that's going to be the next head football coach here has not an empty cupboard. He's got a lot of good players coming back, and he's going to have a great chance to continue this program to either compete for conference championships and ultimately national championships. But maybe for Craig personally, he felt that, you know, that was time to move on. Do you make any attempt to keep him here? No, no. I mean, uh, with those kind of dollars, I just... That there's never a good time to leave, and, and obviously he's accomplished a lot. What would you say to the fans who may be a little bit upset with his departure at this point in time? You know, I, I think they need to kind of – it's just the world we live in now in college athletics, whether it's basketball, football, whatever. I, I think, uh, you know, they're, I think you have to look at what he's done for this program and how he's built this program, how he – the type of kids he's brought into the community, the type of, you know, program that we do have in terms of competition and fierce and – successful on and off the field and and I and from the fan base it's upset you know they're upset because they care and they like him and they want you know, they don't want to see a change nobody likes to see change but I, I think what he's built on this program he deserves an opportunity to finish that out and have the support of the fan base to say you know we appreciate all you've done and let's keep moving forward um, Are you upset? I'm not upset you know obviously he's a friend you know he's a guy that got to know um, but it's, you know, you, you, I knew this day was coming. I really did. I knew at some point Craig Bowl was going to have opportunities, whether it was Wyoming or whoever. And so you hate to see a, a friend and a guy you've, you know, worked really close together with for a number of years build a pretty good program, very, very good program, an excellent program. And you hate to see that change. But, you know, it's going to someday. And so I'm not upset. I'm happy for him. And I, you know, can look forward to who the next person is going to be in place buyout and then I know there's something in the contract about stipulation about recruiting is there like a hands-off yeah it's um it's a, because he's going to Wyoming it's a hundred thousand dollar buyout and we'll work with Wyoming on that and there is a, a clause in there that he can't recruit any talk to our current recruits for a year or anybody that we possibly recruit I would imagine when he goes out to Wyoming there'll probably be a different recruiting base but uh, he may be in the Midwest a little bit but we'll manage that as best we can I, I think Craig will be respectful of that Verbal commitments right now? Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, yes, Gene. Can you just talk to, can you talk to us about what Bo did for the program and just where he, when he came in and where he's taken it? Well, yeah, I think obviously, you know, going through the transition was a major, major step. You know, he took over a program that had had a couple of down years and goes right out of the gate and beats in Montana. You know, then has a couple of 10 and one seasons and wins over, you know, BCS programs. And then quite frankly, has a couple of down years and fights back through that and understands, you know, what he needed to do to kind of rebuild the program. He had to do some self-evaluation himself and of his coaching staff, he made some changes and then went out and recruited some really, really great football players that are part of this program. And um, I would be remiss if I didn't, you know, hats off to this football team it is a difficult time to lose your head coach. And the conversation that we had this morning, I, I, I couldn't be more proud of the way they're handling this. Uh, they're, they know they have one thing in mind, and even this disruption is not easy. They're going to work through it and, and get through it the best they can. And with the le senior leadership and the captains, I think they'll just be fine. You have a timetable for when you want to have the next head coach? I, I don't. That's why I want to visit with President Brashani this week and spend a little time with him. i got to find out, um, you know, from the process and policy on campus, if what I need to do, if, if I open it, how long it has to stay open, can I do an emergency hire, all those kind of things. I get a, got to get a better feel for that this week, and I'll know a little bit more as the week goes along. Do you anticipate hiring a new head coach before the, the season might be over? Possibly. Yeah, I mean, you could see a situation if, if 
you know, where you got a new head coach named and Craig's still part of the team. And I, that would be a little unusual and a little odd, but I could see that happening because, um, you know, you're looking at January 4th or whenever, if we make it all the way to the final game, that's a long time without, you know, and then all of a sudden you get recruiting in the, in the middle. So I want to try to move as quickly as we can. But Craig would definitely coach the team still. Yeah. This next coach to be the same style of play, or it's more the the candidate than the style of play with you know the focus. You on know, I, that's a good question. Obviously, you know I know what's been successful here over the number of years. You know everybody said when we quit running the veer. Oh my goodness, how can we not run the veer? Um, and yet we. But I think power of football and the kind of football we play up here makes a lot of sense. And I think a candidate hopefully would understand that and, and find that to be a fit for them. But again, a lot of that's going to be, you know, when we hired Craig, I didn't really know what kind of offense we were going to run. So he kind of came in and built it. Would you expect to keep the salary structure the same for the next head coach, whoever it might be, since Craig was uh, competitive in FCS? Yeah, I, I, you know, we certainly don't want to go backwards. Obviously, a lot of that's going to be 10 on the experience and what the candidate brings to the table. But, you know, right now we're at the top of, um, we're not even at the top of the Missouri Valley in terms of the head coach. Uh, the co coaching pool is pretty good. So I don't know that I'd go back a lot differently. We may structure it you know, somehow differently in terms of how you get to the final number. But I don't see us going back a great deal just because we want to get the best coach we can out there. Do you believe Wyoming was on the list of schools that made you nervous about calling? Uh, yeah, it was. You know, Wyoming, obviously, the, the potential changes that didn't happen you know, that were out there. But when I saw that Wyoming was open, I, I knew they would come after Craig. And sure enough, they did. And, and when I looked at the salary structure, I thought, yeah, this was going to be a tough one. Players were commenting this morning. And judging by the reaction on social media, it seemed like a lot of players were kind of blindsided by how the news came out. Do you anticipate any sort of a rift developing between them and Coach Bull? And how do you feel about how the announcement came out? You know, I wish, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. Um, we probably should have notified the kids last night, uh, but it just, next thing you know, gets away from you. And, and I think there was, you know, there were obviously, everybody, nobody wants to find out the way they found out. And, but I don't think there's, you know, again, this, this group of players will rally around whatever the decision is. And, you know, they're hurt, they're, they're sad, they're disappointed, they're frustrated, you know, all those things, all those emotions that go along with a change like this, uh, they're real. But at the end of the day, they know what they need to do and accomplish and how to get there. And they're mature enough that they will. So I don't, I don't see that being a problem going forward. What was the plan? Was he, gonna, was he going to announce on the TV show this morning, no matter what? Or no, he was going to call him today, this morning, and do it this morning was the plan. Yeah. Anything? All right, thanks very much. Appreciate it.